The next topic of this lecture involves how the proton moves from the acid to the base. We're going to be using acid-base electron transfer arrows. I have here a net acid-base reaction and the Lewis structures involved. Here is the chlorous acid and here is the hydroxide. We know that the proton moves from the chlorous acid to the hydroxide to make water. But how does it get there? Many of you were taught this in high school, that the proton moves from the acid to the base. That is true, but it won't help you for organic chemistry. Organic chemistry thinks about the electrons moving, not the atoms. So here's how we would do this. Bronsted acid-base reactions have two curved arrows. The first arrow is a capture arrow. It starts at the lone pair of the base, so that's right here. These two electrons reach out and grab that hydrogen, kind of like two hands belonging to a person, the hydroxide, reaching out to grab hold of that hydrogen. Remember that the bond holding the hydrogen to the oxygen is composed of two electrons. So I call this the release arrow. The two electrons in the bond lose their attachment to hydrogen and fall back to oxygen to become a lone pair. So it is like the hydroxide reaching out to take hydrogen and the chlorous acid letting go. Capture and release. Now notice something about the arrows. The arrows always start at electrons and they end at an atom, either the hydrogen atom or the atom the hydrogen was attached to. So once this capture and release happens, what are we left with? You notice that the lone pair of the hydroxide has made a bond with hydrogen. So these two electrons have now become this bond. For the release arrow, the two electrons that were holding on to the hydrogen fall back to the oxygen and they become this lone pair. So now instead of our starting materials, you notice our ending materials are the chloride ion, which we have the proper Lewis structure of, and water, which we also have the proper Lewis structure of. So let's try another example and draw our capture and release arrows. Now, students often get confused because they see this picture here has a lot of lone pairs and a lot of hydrogens. So before we even start to draw our arrows, we need to figure out which one is the acid and which one is the base. So let's look up ammonia and hydrogen carbonate on our acid-base table. Both materials are in both the acid column and the base column. But what we can see is that hydrogen carbonate is a stronger acid than the ammonia, and ammonia is a stronger base than the hydrogen carbonate. So it makes sense to assign the hydrogen carbonate as our acid, and the ammonia as our base. So I've noted this here under each material. Ammonia is a very weak acid, or it can be a base. Hydrogen carbonate is amphiprotic, so it can be an acid or a base. But our assignments are that ammonia is a better base, and hydrogen carbonate is a better acid. You could also write the reaction both ways. In the top way, I have the assignments where hydrogen carbonate is the acid and loses a proton, and ammonia is the base and gains a proton to become ammonium. The bottom way to write the products has their roles reversed. You could figure out the equilibrium constant to both reactions by taking Ka of reacting acid over Ka of produced acid, and you would find that the top reaction with the assignments that I have circled is the better reaction. So let's ignore the opposite assignment and I'm gonna write base under the ammonia and acid underneath the hydrogen carbonate. 
Now, hopefully, it's clear what we need to do. This is the base. So it's going to reach out and grab the hydrogen. And the acid is going to let go. So we reach out and let go. WebAssign will ask you to enter letters to describe this. So what we're going to describe is an arrow starting at C and ending at D, and another arrow starting at E and ending at F. Notice our arrows start at electrons. The first one ends at hydrogen. And the second one ends at the atom that was attached to hydrogen. Let's try another example. Water and hydrogen sulfide. Once again, if you look at the picture here, there's all sorts of electrons and hydrogens. So how do you know to make your assignments? Let's go check the table. What we see is there's not much difference between hydrogen sulfide and water as acids. They're within a factor of 10. But there's a dramatic difference between hydrogen sulfide as a base compared to water. Hydrogen sulfide is the stronger base. So that's what we should make our assignment. Hydrogen sulfide is the base. Water is our acid. So our first step, figure out which one is acid and which one is the base. As mentioned previously, hydrogen sulfide is a medium base. So we'll assign it the base role in this reaction. And water is our acid. So with these assignments, our acid loses a proton to become hydroxide. Our base gains a proton to become hydrosulfuric acid. I've also written it the opposite way with the opposite assignments, where water is the base and hydrogen sulfide is the acid. And we could calculate the equilibrium constant for these reactions. What you'll find is that neither reaction is terribly good, but the top reaction has a better equilibrium constant and makes more product than the bottom reaction, so my assignments are right. Water should be the acid, and hydrogen sulfide should be the base. So I'll ignore the other assignment. Now I've got my molecules with the assignments underneath. So we're going to start one arrow at the base's lone pair and end it at the acid's hydrogen. So that means we start at F and we go to hydrogen A. This is our capture arrow. Then we start our other arrow at the bond holding on to the acid's hydrogen and ending at the atom the hydrogen is bonded to. So that means B going to C. That's our release arrow. So we should input F to A and B going to C. Now here's your question. Choose the letters that represent the best acid-base reaction. Since HF is the only one that has a proton, this has to be our acid. But remember for your base, when you reach out and grab the proton, you're making a bond. So if you reach out from the carbon, you'll make a bond to hydrogen, and you'll have this Lewis structure shown. If you reach out with the nitrogen, you will have this Lewis structure. Which one looks like a more stable Lewis structure to you? To tie off the topic of acid-base equilibrium constants, I'll remind you of a childhood experience you might have had, which was making a volcano at home. The ingredients are fresh baking soda, soapy water, red and yellow food dye, and vinegar. So now that you're in college, what's going on? Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Vinegar has in it acetic acid. So here is our net acid-base reaction. Acetic acid reacts with hydrogen carbonate to give us acetate and carbonic acid. The equilibrium constant for this reaction has the Ka of the acetic acid over the Ka of our produced acid, which is carbonic acid. You can see that it's got an equilibrium constant that favors product, but why, when you do this, does it react so extensively? 
Well, remember that carbonic acid can fall apart into water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide gives you the foam in the bubbles that appears to be orange lava. And don't forget dear old Le Chatelier's. We are removing product as it is formed, so the reaction keeps proceeding to the right to replace the carbonic acid that was lost because it fell apart. If you would like to enjoy some Mentos in Diet Coke, feel free to check out this video.